Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 56 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I'm uh, setting up a little waystone. Oop. Reactors land. All right. Hey, last episode, uh, we got our nuclear reactor up and running. I set up a nice little logic gate uh, that'll toggle this guy on. Uh, and then if any amount of heat output causes uh, dangerous temperatures to rise, what we'll have happen is it'll automatically turn off the reactor for us, which will be cool. Or I can manually turn it off with this button right here. Not too shabby. Uh, I've been playing with the uh, with the burn right here. Getting it right around 1 is not bad. It produces about 20,000 RF a tick, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, as my machines down here are running, they are taking pretty much a huge amount of RF to run all this stuff. Especially this guy. He's very RF hungry. He's very RF hungry. Uh, to the point where I've actually turned him off for a moment. So if I turn him back on, we'll see he's, you know, using 204,000 RF a tick, which is a lot. It's a lot. And he quickly runs out of power. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a fun time. So that's why I have him turned off at the moment. Um, because as much as that power gen is great, he's, uh, you know, we're, we're struggling with the amount of power we have without the reactor running. Now the problem is, uh, with that reactor running... Let's boop doop reactors. Hooray, that's a lot easier than flying out here all the time. Uh, we are producing nuclear waste. And that's, uh, you know, it's kind of a good thing, depending on how you look at it. Nuclear waste is good uh, because in mechanism, nuclear waste can lead to cool things. Uh, but we need to start, start processing it. And that's uh, where we're going to come in probably over here-ish. Um, let's see if this chunk... Here is that, then we should probably load this one as well. And that should be a little bit better. Yeah. And this chunk right here that I'm sitting in uh, is going to handle the nuclear reactor's waste output. So that's what we're going to do over here. Now, luckily, nuclear waste is not too bad, uh, though it is pretty bad. So, first things we're going to need uh, are some pipes. No, not pipes, tubes. Yeah. Uh, I like, I like basic pressurized tubes for nuclear waste, and I'll tell you why. Tubes can hold a stupid amount of gas if you use the ultimate tier, right? Like a thousand buckets worth of gas. Uh, but the basic tier holds far less, only four buckets worth. So here's the deal. With nuclear waste, you never want to break the pipe or the machine that it's in. Otherwise, it'll spill out into the chunk and you'll have a bad day. It happens to me all the time. It will probably happen to me again, because Dyer can be a derp, and he sometimes forgets. But, or, you know, just makes, like, you know, muscle memory. It's a thing, right? Like, you're clicking and doing stuff, and before you know it, you accidentally break the wrong block, and then, oh, well, I guess we just created a nuclear incident. Happens. Just happens sometimes, to the best of us. So what I need is another fission reactor port that's going to handle the output of our nuclear gas. Uh, now, in addition to this, I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves set up with radioactive waste barrels. These guys. Uh, it's just steel and lead, so luckily they're not too bad. And I will pop this dude in here. And get me oh, 32 of them. Sounds like a number that sounds cool. Now, in addition to that, I'm also going to want some solar neutron activators uh, and some isotropic centrifuges. Now, I see a thing that I don't have access to yet, and that is the HDPE sheet. And do you not know how to make bronze? I thought, I thought we had bronze, like, really? We never taught you bronze? We don't have bronze on autocraft? How is that even possible? How is that even possible? Oh, we'll fix that real quick. Okay. Uh, so I'm seeing that for the solar neutron activator, we're gonna need some HDPE sheets. That's definitely a thing we're gonna need to get into. So let's take a look at making HDPE sheets today. Um, Three becomes one is how we're going to want to do this. We can do it like this way, but it's eight becomes one. This way it's three becomes one. Highly recommend going this route. Um, HTTP sheets are a resource from mechanism 
Now, it's funny because usually um, I go with ethylene generators in mechanism, but I kind of skipped that in favor of doing deep resonance and checking that out as the mid-game power source for my needs. So usually I would have had an ethylene line set up, but in this case, we did not, so that's okay. Uh, so these two liquids are what we're going to need uh, to make our HDPE sheets. Um, we need oxygen, which we know how to get plenty of, uh, flowing or, or regular liquid ethylene, uh, and substrates. So luckily, substrates are not bad. It is just ethylene and any water. So, you know, we can see we're cycling through. Or hydrogen and water, I guess. Oh, wait. Ethylene and water use that. All right. Hydrogen and water uses uh, biofuel. So, yeah, we're going to want biofuel, hydrogen, and some kind of water. There we go. That'll get me that in a pressurized reaction chamber. Uh, let's see. Substrates are also made in a pressurized reaction chamber. Yeah, HDPEs are made that. And then liquid ethylene is what we're going to need next. And that's made in a condensator from ethylene. And ethylene is made in another pressurized reaction chamber with water, hydrogen, and biofuel. Okay, cool. And that also happens to make the substrate that we're going to need. So that's kind of cool. Easy peasy, right? So a couple pressurized reaction chambers uh, and a rotary condensator. And basically we make the ethylene and the substrate with hydrogen and water. And then we use the substrate and the ethylene with oxygen to make the HDPE sheet. So really not a bad production line if that's all you're making. So let's get some pressurized reaction chambers. So we're going to want, I don't know, a handful of these probably. So I'll go craft these off camera and we'll be right back. Does that sound fair? Let's take a look at compact machines for this one. Because um, there's a couple production lines from Mechanism that I'd like to try out. Uh, so first off, I'm going to make some polished deep slate. Then we're going to make compact machine walls. And then I'm going to make a compact machine. I'm going to make the giant tier because that needs a diamond block. And that's an 11 by 11 by 11. I could get the max size, but that requires a block of netherite. And no thank you right now. I'm good. Uh, at some point soon, we will be able to get netherite a little bit easier, but not that easy. Okay. So compact machine ready to go. So compact machines is a super cool mod. Super, super fun. Uh, if I place it in the world and then it's a new machine, if I right click on it, if I shift, nope, I don't want to do that. Uh, where's the doohickey? Personal shrinking device. I think that's what I'm going to need here. Okay. If I just right click the personal shrinking device, it gives me a little bit of a blurb about how things work. Um, yeah, right click with a personal shrinking device, use JI to look up crafting recipes. Boom. Or not. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Oh, hello. I think it was just taking a minute. Okay, cool. And then right click to get out. Cool. All right, so now it should be quick, right? If I right click on the bound to zero, negative 64. Okay, that's cool. So basically, Compact Machines is its own dimension. Um, and we are in one spot in the dimension, as we can see here. Uh, and now we can work in this machine, build stuff, and I can right click to get out of it. And we'll basically pop out. So like, in theory, we're inside that little box, right? That's It's a shrinking device, so we shrink into it. In reality, it's a different dimension. Right In Minecraft's technical behind the scenes, it's a different dimension. But the concept is that you're inside this little tiny box and you can build things in it. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Uh, now, unfortunately, there's no wireless transmitter in range, so I can't access my wireless uh, refined storage network here. I could if I used the network stuff, but basically I'm not going to do that. So we're going to need uh, to get ourselves a few things just to get ready uh, so I've got some of the machines we need. Now, we're going to need biofuel, which we can get from quite a few resources. Uh, but we're going to have to figure out a good one. Potatoes are usually good. Potatoes are usually good. Now, what can we use to grow potatoes? We could go with a garden cloche. We haven't used that one in a while. Uh, phytogenic insulator is not a bad option either. Just needs water. Do you really need light? Oh, I forget if you need light or not. 
I forget how fast the phytogenic insulator is as well. Isolator, insulator, insulator. Yeah. Eh, looks like those are my two best options. Let's try the phytogenic insul insulator just because. I don't think we've tried it in a while, and we'll see how good it is. Um, and maybe it's good enough, and maybe it's not. And if it's not, then we'll go with the, the other one. But we're going to need lots of, 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 of potatoes. Okay, so that's going to be that. Um, what else are we going to need a lot of? Probably piping for fluids. We're going to need a sink. I know that much. Good. Uh, we're going to need um, some tubes and some pipes. And definitely some power. So we want to bring our flux network out there and the ultimate universal dude. Ultimate universal cables. Get me 10 more of those if you don't mind. And a flux point. See, who thought automating flux was a bad idea? There we go. And a little bit more universal cable. That should be good for now. And then we'll see how it goes. So step one, let's figure out this potato situation. Okay. So we know we're going to need water for a couple of things. First and foremost, we need it for the phytogenic insulator. Uh, we're also going to need power. So we're not going to want to forget that. Um, now we might want to do some things with laser nodes. That might not be a bad idea. So how about on the down here, you can extract fluids. Yeah, laser nodes might not be bad, especially because of the compact machineness. Like there's no breaking blocks underneath, right? So we might want everything laser nodey and that could be cool. So where's my buddy the laser wrench? There he is. Okay, so here's going to be you. And you're going to bind to this. And then on the down, you're going to have an inserter of water and you're going to be configured to accept water from the top. Sweet. Water going in. Perfect. Uh, then let's put an energy card up top here who's going to extract energy. A thousand R for tick is not a bad start. Boom, boom, boom. Actually, yes, this is correct. And then on the down here, you can have an energy card and you should be filling up with power. Hooray! That's pretty cool. All right. Now then, if I put a potato in here, how long are you going to take to do things? Pretty long. All right. Well, question answered. But I want to get uh, thermal augments, and hopefully that'll be better. So if I got, like, one of these guys and a few of these guys. And I know appetite can be used for stuff. Appetite dust can make phyto grow. Okay. Now, is there the better phyto grow still, or is there just literally phyto grow and that's it? So you can make phyto soil infuser. Ooh, what's phyto soil do? I don't know. That's all cool stuff. Let's get phyto grow automated. So to make phyto grow, we're going to want this. Do we have niter? We actually have 1.5 thousand of it, so that's perfect. Cool. Well, that's neat. Now, is there a better phyto grow recipe? Eight from that. Yeah, that's about it. That's pretty good. Now, that's easy peasy then. We'll get the next 30 ready. So give me a stack of that. Not a problem. And then, in theory, all the auto crafting of our augments should be done by now. So we can pop into this guy, and we'll see how much faster we can make our potato growth be. So first things first, you and you. That's pretty good. And then we put Phyto Grow in there. Now here's something I would like to do. Um, 
How about you, sir? How about on the down is your output? And then we have two cards, right? You're going to insert into the top, OK? But you're going to extract from the down. Aha! Aha! That's not bad. So the Fido Grow gives you a much better chance of getting, I think, dupes. But even without Fido Grow, with the augments in there, he grows pretty quickly. So I'm pleased with that. Now, obviously, one downside we have is the poisonous potato, which we'll deal with in a minute. Probably with a trash can, I'm thinking. Probably. And how am I for filters in here? I've got some of you and I got some of you. Works. Perfect. All right. Back into here. So I'm going to filter an insert of, of, of trash cans. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is on the insert card here, I'm going to increase the priority to 10. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to set this up. See, this happens sometimes with uh, with with the phytogenic insulator. But um, I'm going to set this machine up so that when he extracts his potatoes, the number one priority he does for insert is into the same machine so that he always keeps himself stocked. Then I want to add to other machines. OK. So here's your trash can. Here's a node. On the down, we're going to have an insert card. OK. And you're going to filter on the down poisonous potatoes on the allow. OK. So that when I connect you guys, he should extract poisonous potatoes only and void them. How cool is that? All right. Nice. Goodbye, poisonous potatoes. That works for me. Now, I could absolutely make that like a drawer. I mean, are poisonous potatoes ever used for anything? Poison modules, poison plates, the Kodoku. I don't know. Nutritional liquefier. I can get nutritional paste. I don't think I really need it, though. Oh, that's cool. Matacraft uses it for something. It's used to make ethanol. But regular potatoes are, too. They're just a little better. Meh. We'll just void them for now. All right, cool. So now we've got Phytogenic Insulator making potatoes for us. All right, now we're going to need an electrolytic separator. Boop. And the electrolytic separator will likely want to live probably here. Um, and let's clear out all the side configs. I wonder if I shift click you, would it clear them all? I might add that as a request. Uh, so fluids actually, yeah, you can input on pretty much any side, but I'm really only getting input in the top, so that's cool. And then for gases, let's go left and right. Okay, so you're gonna have on the down, insert fluid. Boom, and now you should be getting water, perfect. And you can also insert energy. Okay, so now energy and water going in there. Cool. Uh, we're going to want our pressurized gas tubes. And let's have you guys um, go places. Sounds cool. Uh, so for ethylene, right, we need to make liquid ethylene. That's going to be water plus hydrogen plus biofuel, right? And the biofuel is made in a crusher. And I don't think I made the crusher yet. So let me make one of those real quick. Right. So crusher. Yoink. OK, and good. I've got some speed and energy upgrades here. And you know what I might even do? It's a quick, just a basic tier installer. We don't need this much tech. I don't even know if I need the tier installer. We'll try it without. I'm pretty sure we won't need it. I'm pretty sure we won't need it. All right. So let's have the crusher go here. Okay. Now you're going to also need on the down. I would like you to insert on green and energy. 
Sweet. And I want you to auto eject to the right. So now he's going to crush. And make us biofuel. And this guy's going to make the potatoes. Cool. Now I might make this a high priority on the down. Let's make it priority five. Because if we ever get a rotten potato, I want to make sure that it goes in here first. Right? So it'll, you know, if, if, if the rotten potato is like the first one in the slot for whatever reason, it'll go to the trash can first instead of this one. All right, cool. So that gets me biofuel. Now we want our pressurized reaction chamber that's going to make our ethylene, right? So that's going to be the hydrogen and the water and the biofuel. So for you... Okay, side config items. Okay, energy, fluids, and gases. Gases in the back. So you need hydrogen, right? And your side config for gases is output on left. So if we get this guy, he should be hydrogen. Nice. That works for me. And then he should be filling up with hydrogen. Now for you, on the down, you're going to get these two cards. And when we connect you, nice. Now pressurized reaction chambers are on the list of things that make a lot of noise. I might keep that one muted all the way, because that's kind of an annoying sound. And hey look, substrates and ethylene. Well, that's nice. Cool. Now, ethylene we need and substrates we need. Okay. So let's go home and get more cards because we're getting low on cards. So you can activate. So I'm going to need basically 10 of every card. beans I like it I do I like it starting to like my own mod which is a surprise to no one all right so uh, you're making your substrate you're making your ethylene right now ethylene is a gas so we need to dump him into the rotary condensator okay and that's gonna go here um, now your side config, I don't want you getting any items, gases, you can input on the left, and fluids will output on the right, okay? So for you, you're also going to need a card on the down for energy, so you can get charged up, and then your gases can output to the right, perfect. And then ethylene is turning into liquid ethylene. Nice. Now I think we're going to need more nodes as well. So let me cook those up real quick. And that was pretty easy peasy. Okay. So now you're turning your ethylene into liquid ethylene, right? Now I was pretty sure these stayed chunk loaded, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, and let's make sure that you are connected here so that you get your power. Nice. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So your ethylene becomes liquid ethylene. That's cool. Do I have to, like, manually chunk load this? It's possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Perfect. So ethylene becomes liquid ethylene, right? Now our HDPE sheets need liquid ethylene and oxygen and substrates. Okay? And that's also in a rotary condensator. So you're going to take... First off, let's side config everything off. Well, let's just fluids. Duh. So I want you to accept fluids from the left, okay, and accept gases from the back. And you need oxygen. Cool. All right. Now, I don't know what ratios we need, so I'm just going to have you both dumping excess, which means the electrolytic separator will always be running, but that's okay. Um, now, can any of you guys use less, use some gas upgrades? Um, not supported. 
not supported, not supported. So I'm gonna say no. Okay. Uh, but then for the node, right? So you need the, the um, let's connect you to this guy. So on the down, let's have you receive energy. And then for items, let's take our substrates. So let's side config this so that the top can be the output for items. Okay. And on the down, I would like you to extract on orange eight items at a time. Okay. And then you for items can input on the top. And on the down will be an insert on orange. Boom, substrates. Eh? How cool is that? All right. All right. So now we're making HDPE pellets. That is cool beans. Now I could absolutely speed all these machines up and do all the usual stuff to make this a lot quicker. I may wind up doing that, we'll see, we'll get there. But at the very least, we have a bit of HDP. Now we have 10 in there right now, I'm gonna pop out of this machine and I'm gonna look at tunnels. Uh, so there are energy, fluid, and item tunnels, and this is how you get items, energy, and fluids in and out of compact machines. Short of tesseracts, quantum entanglopers, and all the other things that you can use to wirelessly transmit stuff across the worlds and dimensions. Um, but item tunnels, which is what I'm going to try out, because I just want to see how well it works out, are what's going to let us uh, transfer stuff out. So I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but we're going to see. So if we get um, a functional storage drawer... Now, do I just put you, no, okay. So you're gonna go here. And if I go into, oh, that's cool. When you right click it, you can see the room preview. I love that. What's this button do? T take me in there? That's neat. That's neat, I like that. All right, so for you then, if I put a tunnel, let's say here, connected to Oak Door on up, well, that's, handy if I right click down north south east and west cool but I want up connected to oak drawer that is super cool now what I'm going to do is on the opposite side of this guy so that's south I want to do north let's insert on magenta okay now for your side config how about down will be the output and what I'll do is I'll get a magenta card extracting eight items at a time. Is that going to work? Apparently not. Oh, you know what? He doesn't recognize a connection there. Okay. North. 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 Opposite of that. Yes, item card. So he doesn't seem to want to work. Now, can I shift right click to get this out? Yes, so give me that card back. Let me reset him. How about on the down here, give me this card back. Let me reset him. How about on the output on the east side? And then we're gonna need item conduits. Let's use those and see how they work out. So for whatever reason, laser IO doesn't recognize that as a valid inventory. So I'm gonna have to test that in my, in my dev environment. But for now, what we can use is logistical transporters, does that sound cool? So this is mechanisms item pipe transfer. So if I got you, well, that seems to be working. So why didn't laser I recognize you? It's a very good question. The fact that it didn't draw a laser into that tells me that that's the problem. Now, if we pop out, we should see them going into the drawer. 
Yep, or not. Yep, or not. That's that's also possible. Are you voiding my HDPE pellets that I worked so hard to make? That thing that I now have literally an infinite amount of. How rude. Says it's connected to the drawer. Doesn't seem to be connected to the drawer, does it? What if we threw a chest up there? How are you doing, by the way? You're doing pretty good. Does it work with the chest? Nope. See, laser I.O. was right. <laughs> laser I.O. was correct about this not really working super great. Uh, so that's okay. I'm not going to sweat it. Uh, what I'm going to do is just forget the these dudes here. I might be doing something wrong. It's definitely possible. Oh, hello. Well, there's, there's all my HDPE pellets. They got stored inside the... Hmm. That's interesting. Well, that's neat. You know what I could just do? Is you. Auto eject on. Boom. Does that work? I think that works. I think it works. So now if I take a stack of these and we go out here, I believe we said it was the enriching factory that we're gonna wanna do this in. Yep, that works for me. And now we've got what we need to make our solar neutron activators. Cool. All right, that feels like a good wrapping up point for the episode. So what I'm gonna do uh, effectively is wrap up here. We'll come back next time. And when we get back, we'll start processing our nuclear waste. Sound like a plan? I hope so, because that's what we're going to do. Uh, so for now, Double 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, got to play with Compact Machines today, which is always a good time. And uh, yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. I like Compact Machines. I've always liked Compact Machines. I just got to figure out what's up with the item tunnels. It's possible that I need to like extract out the top of here rather than just relying on a chest being there. But we'll figure it out. I don't know. I'll play with it a little bit. For now, Dollar Point sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.